Hello, my name is Jade, and today I'm so excited to talk to you guys about Dare. Yes. So, in case you don't know, this is the second book in the Foolish Kingdom series, and I'm so glad I was wrong that Trick wasn't a standalone book. Trick is the book that comes before Dare, and I thought it was a standalone, and it's my third favourite book of all time. And then I discovered that there was more, um, I immediately went and picked up Dare, and oh boy, I was not disappointed. Jasta is probably my favourite writer. I just love, love, love her writing style. I love how detailed and intricate it is, and it's like really beautiful language, it's really like figurative. Um, and romantic and oh, I just love it. So in case you don't know, um, Foolish Kingdoms is a four book series. So there's Trick, Dare, and then there are two after this, which I need to get to. And basically this world is divided into four seasons. So spring, summer, autumn, winter. They both have different names. So there's uh, Whim, Whim to Me, Perilyn, Iridis, and Mister. The first book takes place in spring, winter me, and it's so lovely. It's um, between a princess and a jester, and they fall in love, and it was just so... it's everything to me. And this book takes place in summer, and it's a love story between Flair, who's a fool, a prisoner, and Jerin, who's a winter prince. So basically it's going spring, summer, autumn, winter. So the next book I assume will take place in Mister, which is the Autumn Kingdom. Ah, oh, and it's just so good. It's so good. I also feel like I should give you guys a little bit of a trigger warning. There is discussion and description of mental illness and that sort of thing. I am really like squeamish and a hypochondriac and I really take issue with things that feel too real to me, um, especially in fiction. I was fine with it, but I know that it may trigger some people, so just so you know, that that's in this book. So it may not be the thing for you if you're really triggered by it, but I was fine. So this book, of course, um, was a little bit steamy. It does take a place in a jungle, but there is some sizzly romance. If you're a youngin, this one probably isn't for you. There isn't an age restriction on it or anything, but it does have like sex in it and kind of adult themes, so it may not be the one for you if you're younger. So the other thing about this series is that it really tackles mental health and mental illness. And the way that people with these afflictions are treated in the in these kingdoms. So born fools, as they're called in this world, they are sold between kingdoms for labour and slavery and experimentation, or they're locked up. And our main character, Flair, um, she was one of those fools. She was imprisoned, and that's where we find her at the start of this book. And Jerin is the prince of the Winter Kingdom who specialises in experimenting on fools. The first book tackled this as well. It tackled it really well. It's, su it's such an important story. Like, even if you don't like romance, you can find other meaning in this. Like, it just tells a really important message about ableism and how everyone should be treated. More people need to talk about these books, please. It is so good. Go pick up Trick. You will not be disappointed. Then come and pick up Dare, and we can get right into it. I gave Trick, like, 100%, 5 out of 5 stars, and I'm giving Dare a 4.5 stars for an 86%. It's not saying that it was bad or anything, it just nothing can live up to trick. But this was a very good sequel and I'm really excited to share it with you and to keep going. So go read Trick, um, read Dare, and come back and we can discuss it, okay? You'll want to, trust me. Okay, goodbye people that haven't read Dare or Trick. Goodbye! I really hope there are people watching this because that means that other people have read this and I just really want to talk to someone about it, okay? So just leave all of the comments, just tell me everything that you love about it, just talk to me. <laughs> okay, calm down Jade. So I tried to wear like jungle vibes today and I found this ring which is a crown or it could be Jester Motley, we don't know. How, how do you guys feel about the cover? The first, the 
addition of trick that I have is the white and red one with um like the beautiful like crowns and mot motley on it and it's just so beautiful. I do like that one more than this one only because I prefer simplicity but this one is like stunning like look how like well done these characters are drawn and like it's just so colorful and pretty life is busy but i like burned through this book it, oh my god it's so good and if i'm a bit all over the place with this then please don't judge me i'm just <laughs> really excited so the thing about natalia's writing is that she has really beautiful lines like almost as soon as we jump into it she has this line that goes the evil world expected me to curl up in the corner like a seashell silent and small unbreakable forgetting that a seashell held the roar of an entire ocean inside and that was just so beautiful to me like, flair's character in this is so strong and stubborn and fiery and relatable i feel like she she's quick to anger and she has dreams and fantasies but i feel like that could be anybody and jerin too at first i really hated jerin i was like no nah, i'm not on board with this romance but it was really beautiful to see their relationship develop and their attitudes change and how that ended up changing the world around them in the end. So yes, I do like Jaren now. I think he's cool. When he was described with blue hair, I'm like, immediately I just imagined Marge Simpson. <laughs> Okay, so we start off with Flair being captured and taken to this tower. They throw her in there and they brand her around the neck, like with paint. And we end up learning that it like went into her throat and that's what took away her voice. Flair in this entire book is mute. We have a character that can't speak. And so she ends up speaking in like italics. She ends up speaking like this. I have a name, it's Flair. And that's basically her moving her lips or writing in the sand. That's the only way she can communicate. And it was just awful to know that they branded her like that. And we learned that she was 10 when they took her. What the heck? These kingdoms are wrong. <laughs> I just love the way that Natalia describes stuff like um, Flair hops over a stingray in the water and um, she's like a swimming blanket. And I also just found it really funny. Like there was this part where Jaren was looking around at the jungle. He's like, I looked with my science eyes. I was like, okay, Jaren, is that a superpower or something? This entire series but this book in particular is all about changing our expectations there's this line that goes fools did not save princes and it just shows like the barriers between classes kingdoms people with dif differing states of mind and it was just really interesting to see how Natalia tackled this and showed that we can implement this in our like real world like things can change and it takes a few daring people to do it. Okay, let's talk about Little Knight for a bit. So he was so cute. He's just this little green frog that follows them around and is like sentient so it can understand what they're saying. Oh, I was so heartbroken when um he got poisoned and like he was dying. I was like, no, Little Knight. Flair describes him as a little frog chum. Oh, and he was just so cute. Like it like, he always snuggled up to her and I was like, oh, you're a frog and that's kind of gross, but it's cute at the same time. I really love how Natalia described the scenery of the jungle on the aisle. I could really picture it and, like, smell it and, like, feel it. Everything moved or grew here, everything tangled and everything breathed. And it just feels so real. So we start off with Flair being captured in this tower and there are these other cellmates as well. And we learn a bit about them. There's that lady who has two personalities. There's another guy who self-harms. Um, and she's locked in this tower with Pearl, who's her cellmate. And Pearl, I think, has anxiety. She's just really fidgety and she's, like, really paranoid about, like, her body and stuff. And these guards come in and they, like, beat her up and stuff. And one day, Jaren comes for the fool trade to take some fools back to his kingdom for experimentation. And essentially, Flair escapes. And the thing with Flair is that she's what's called a sand drifter. So it's this whole culture of people who like live on the ocean and they sell like treasures um, and they're explorers basically. 
And so she ends up finding her family's boat that was taken away from them. And she, like, escapes and Jaren fo- follows her and they end up stranded on this island that Flair's been looking for this whole time. She feels that it's been calling her. All I could think about was, um, It calls me from Moana. They get shipwrecked on this Isle of Lost Rain. And, um, basically that's when they live in the jungle for three years. That was so long. And they, yeah, that's when they end up, like, having a romance. And that's basically when everything kicks off. I thought it was really interesting how, um, the Isle of Lost Rain myth worked. Like, the map was hidden in the actual, like, written, um, words of the song. And I thought that was just really, like, unique and cool. I mentioned in this book, on page 119, there are jade parakeets. And I was like, yes, I made it into one of my favourite series. (laughs) (sighs) I really love the title of this book, Dare. It's called A Dangerous Love Story, and Trick was called A Foolish Love Story. So it's basically, that was more about class and the difficulties that came in their relationship, whereas Dare um, is about being a fool and being not a fool, basically. It shows that they had to dare and they had to understand each other to do so. Oh my gosh, when, when, um, Poet and Briar were mentioned, um, and it said, like, oh, they've been together in Mister for nine years, I was like, oh my god. As soon as they were mentioned, I'm like, my babies! And then when Jerrion went to Mister, I'm like, when are we gonna see Poet and Briar? When are we gonna see Poet and Briar? And then Briar steps into the room and she's like, those ribbons are for my son and she means Niku. And I'm like, ah! Yeah, oh, and when Poet came in, I was like, oh my gosh. And they are like old now, or older. Briar's like 25, I think, or 27, which is really interesting. There's been a big time jump between the books. Oh, I'm getting tired. <laughs> And it was just really cool, like, when um, Poet was getting a drink and he was like, hmm, like, just, like, being so dramatic about which one he wanted. And, um, Jaren's kind of explaining, but he can't explain too much because the world is still very new and he doesn't know who to trust. Like, he needs Poet and Briar as allies in order to, like, try and change the world and its views on fools. And class and everything, basically. <laughs> But he has to be careful about how much he discloses about him and Flair, um, because fools and princes cannot be together. And that's why it's called a dangerous love story, because it's not foolish, it's dangerous. They have to be really careful about how much they disclose. Trick was really whimsical and romantic and fun, and this one was very beautiful and real and important. I just love how they get on each other's nerves on in the jungle. Um, Flair's like, you have less heart than a suit of armour, and Jaren's like, duh. And the different kinds of rain were really cool. There was that one that was like needles coming down, I was like, oh my god. And there was one that was like punches ra- raining down. Um, there's that spring that can like heal, um, like get paint and bruises off of you and stuff. And there was one that was boiling and one that made you drunk. And when Jaren drank it and he came back to the camp and he's like, I suspect your mythical island has inebriated me. Oh, I just burst out laughing. I really liked that Flair was a person of colour um, and that she is the main character in this book. I thought that was really important. And it really kind of was a parallel between cultures that aren't really respected in that world and this world, because sand drift is a kind of scene as like people that aren't really respected. They sell treasure and stuff, but they're kind of like alienated a little bit. And it was really interesting to get that perspective on the world. Like the way she describes sand, she's like, because Jaren asks her like, oh, why do you like sand so much? And she's like, people adore the ocean so much they forget what holds it up. And I just thought that was really beautiful. But in Trick, we got the steam, and in this one, we also got the steam. And it was really beautiful, I thought. Like, um, like the way that Flair describes, like, becoming intimate with someone physically, she's like, to share myself, to share not to give. And it just kind of shows that, like, 
how independent she is. And it really just made me think about romance in a, in a different way. Like, people in romance always say, like, oh, I give you my everything, you're my whole world. Like, this shows that you can have a healthy relationship and still be completely yourself and own yourself. And I think that's really beautiful. A line that really hit me in this book was when Jerrin went to talk with Poet and Briar and they're talking like, oh, Winter's like, has all this knowledge and stuff, why are you coming to us? And Jerrin's like, it's been educated singularly. And it just shows that knowledge isn't worth anything if it's only from one perspective or if it holds bias against anybody. Knowledge has to encompass all perspectives, all points of view and all truths. And I thought that was a really important sentence. It was really cute, that line where it's like, a spring jester, a summer sand drifter, an autumn princess, a winter prince, artistry and science. That's what's going to change the world. And they all had to come from the different seasons, they all had to show their different backgrounds and they are changing the world and that was just so beautiful. Avengers, step out the way, we've got a new group coming. At the end when Flair like goes off with her dad and she like starts leaving sand murals on the beaches about like fools and her and Jerin and like how about her perspective and she's like the world painted me but now I'm painting the world and I thought that was just really beautiful. Oh my gosh when Jerin um, bargained with Summer to get Pearl back and then Pearl comes to Mr. and um, Jerin opens his vial and like pours the sand of the island into Pearl's hands and she looks at it like knowing that Flair made it, made her dream come true. <sighs> and then, and then when Pearl and Flair finally meet back on the island, standing far from shadows of a cage, we saw one another in brightness. Like they meet each other for the first time when they can actually see each other and it was just so beautiful. Oh, it was so awesome when, when Jerin left that message um, and Flair saw it and they like meet up on the island and then like Flair eventually meets Poet and Briar. They just, Jerin and Flair just keep meeting up on the island like twice a year and it was just really cute to see like their relationship keep on developing and changing. Like, sometimes they were mad at each other, sometimes they were just, like, lost city. And then one of the times they meet up, Jaren got down on one knee, so he proposed to her, and it was just so beautiful. And their wedding, and Poet was, like, the reader, because no one else, he didn't trust anyone else to do it. And she drew a line, like, a ring of sand around them, and they, like, and they just got married, and, like, even though it didn't mean anything back in the kingdom, it really meant something to them. Another great thing about this book is that there is all the gay. Like, Natalia has created the world where that isn't a problem and I love it so much. Jerin has had relationships with both men and women. Um, his grand aunts are the queens of the Winter Kingdom and they're obviously married. And we hear more about Briar's minstrel friend from Trick. I forget his name. I feel like it's Eddie or something like that. I know it's not Eddie, but it feels like that. And how he has a um, partner now, a Piper, who is male, and I thought that was really cute. It's just all the gay, oh, and it just shows what could be. A thing I really appreciated about this book is that Flair is stranded on this island for like three years, and she does, she does grow hair um, under her arms and on her legs and stuff, and it's talked about. No one really talks about that, and I feel like in movies, even when women are stranded, that always like, ah, oh, clean shaven, makeup on, hair done. That doesn't happen on an island, and it was just really refreshing to see such realism, even in fiction. There's talk about periods and how when she was taken prisoner, Flair was like sterilized, so she doesn't bleed and she can't ever have children. And that was just kind of awful to read. Oh, when they go to that pool and her paint starts coming off and they both start getting really excited and she like gulps down the water thinking it'll bring back her voice. That was just so like heartwarming. There is this discussion about fools or people with mental illness. And basically Jerin's saying, some are really bad, like they hurt other people, they really impact 
society in a negative way. And it seems that if Jerin can't find a cure, that he's this scientist, then there mustn't be one and that's the way things were meant to be. But it's just really interesting to see how his attitude changed from experimenting and hurting these people to becoming their advocate and wanting to protect them. It was nice when they were describing like how they were born, like how Flair was born in the sand and how Jerin's first memory was of snow. The siren shark was really interesting for me. So basically when Jerin was little he was almost bitten by this creature called a siren shark and it kills you slowly but it gets rid of your sanity, like it's po that's what its poison does. Since he was almost bitten on the stomach, he's always checking himself to like make sure. He's just so scared of losing his sanity and of being bitten. And then when he saves Flair from one, it like scratches his wrist. It's not poison, but he always keeps checking it because he's so like afraid and like he can't step in the water and stuff. And I just thought that was like so realistic because I feel like sometimes we do worry about stuff even when we know it's not a threat. Uh, I really don't like when um, people write in sand, like wet sand, it just, that's one of my things. Like people have like nails on a chalkboard or like forks on a plate, but like that's my thing, like writing in sand, oh I just can't. So when like they kept describing it, I was like, <laughs> okay. When um, Jerin goes to Mister and he sees like society changing and like um, people with mental disabilities are like working and their families are supporting them and the money that um, the Crown was putting into making prisons for them is being given to families and volunteers and helping society in general and it's just so beneficial for everybody and the ones that can't be rehabilitated they're in an outlying village and they get like medical treatment and it's just so like such an improvement when we learn about why flair was taken basically she just shows these group of kids a shell that her parents gave her and the boy takes it from her and she punches him to take it back they both accidentally fall in quicksand but he freaks out so he's like falling out like there's this whole discussion about whether or not Flair would have saved him but I think she w was about to and all the other kids like gang up on her saying like oh she tried to drown him and stuff the knights take her away so obviously the knights wouldn't believe a bunch of kids, surely, but they're showing bias against Flair for who she is, and that was really kind of hard to read about, but it just was an interesting incorporation. Maybe stories like ours could move kingdoms, and it does, and it's so beautiful. Oh, when Flair's dad showed up at the end, I was like, what the heck? I guess it's cool that he's still alive. Oh, her poor mum, though. And then the Iridis ships come, and there are people, like, going into their jungle, and all the animals are, like, defending them. Like, the snake attacks the knights, and the monkeys, and the bugs, and stuff. And when they have to say goodbye, oh, and when she leaves with her dad, and they just have to, like, split up, and he writes in the sand. As soon as he, like, we heard that he wrote something in the sand, I, I knew what it was going to be. Okay, so I'm going to talk about something else for a little bit. If you haven't watched a movie called Your Name, I would really suggest it. It's my favourite movie of all time. I'm going to talk about that until I flip this back over to the front. Please mute this until I turn it back over. As soon as Jaren wrote something in the sand, I knew it was going to be I love you. And it just broke my heart because in your name, like, we really need to know each other's names to keep in touch. We need something useful. And then she looks down and it just says I love you. And then they forget each other and oh, it's just so frustrating. I was like, Jaren, we need more information. Come on. But they just sail away and he just goes back. Oh, it just hurt. Okay, no more spoilers. Is this based on The Little Mermaid? Because when they got shipwrecked and she, like, has no voice, I was like, okay, I'm getting these vibes. It's probably not, but that's just what I thought. I always, like, connect books with songs and I think this book 
is probably the song Wasteland by Against the Current. I'd check that out. This book is such a clever way to tackle stereotypes and it's written so beautifully and it shows that change can happen. This is turning into a long video but I think that's all I've got to say. Please pick up Trick, please pick up Dare um, and let me know in the comments below everything that you think about them. I'd really love to talk to you about it. I feel like no one's read this and it's really frustrating but I love it so much. So yes, that's all I've got for you today on Dare. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so happy you'd stuck around. It means that I'm not the only one who's read this and I really appreciate that. Or you've just spoiled yourself and in which case it would probably be best if you read the book anyway. I mean, like you already know a lot about it so you might as well like get the whole story. <laughs> but again, thank you so much for watching. It's been a lot of fun. Here are all of my socials. My name is Jade. Thanks again for watching. Just imagine it's raining. <laughs> I'll catch you next time, sweetings. Go change the world, you can do it.